used to be that if you wanted to know something, you looked it up in a book. It's not that long ago, and many of us still do that. But for most children and young people today, the default is the internet, not a book. This change has been brought about by a combination of technological developments. 24-7 connectivity, 3 and 4G networks, and availability of Wi-Fi access. In addition, the fact that many of us have a device we still call our phone, but is actually a powerful handheld device, makes it even easier to access these networks wherever we are. Finally, the software developed for these devices makes finding the information even easier. So easy, in fact, that perhaps it makes finding a book seem like hard work. Well, yes and no. For most children and young people, in their everyday lives, they would tend to go online first. However, as part of their education, many students know that there are drawbacks to electronic sources. As a rule of thumb, many students put a lot of trust in paper-based resources and only a little in online. This is problematic because it's not the mode of delivery that defines the reliability and validity of the source, but the author, publisher and topic. Let's look at some examples. Students tend to think of books as an example of a source of information with authority. From a very young age, we teach children to look in a book to find something out. And as they move through their careers as learners, we encourage them to be more selective and discerning about the books they choose. However, the reliability of print-based media is not assured. There'll be many books in schools now that assert that there are nine planets in the solar system, when we know now that we don't categorise Pluto as a planet. The problem with printed media is that it sometimes lasts longer than the shelf life of the information it contains. Some media is now available in both printed and electronic form, for example, newspapers. Sometimes it's quicker to get the breaking news in online versions, but many people like to read a longer story in the printed version. But whether printed or online, these sources are likely to be subject to journalistic bias of one sort or another. And this is a great example of why we can't necessarily value print-based media over electronic sources or vice versa. But it's about the author that matters. Finally, one of my favourite hot topics, Wikipedia. This is one of the most controversial sources of information on the web and it is much misunderstood. Wikipedia is actually carefully edited and controlled by a huge network of volunteers who moderate the content. And as a repository of crowdsourced information, it is unrivalled. And in a recent study, academics rated Wikipedia against other online encyclopedias, against which it compared favourably. As educators, we need to teach children and young people to critically evaluate the sources of information, whatever they are, in order to become effective digital scholars. As teachers, this sets up a number of challenges for us. How do we teach about the information that's available on the web? Teaching children to ask the right questions in the right places is the first step. And in almost all cases, a search using a simple search engine like Google is not a useful thing to do. It just produces too many returns, including sponsored links. If you do use a search engine, children need to understand things like quotation marks and plus signs to help in the search. And if it's basic information that's needed, it's much better to use a selected online source such as the BBC or Wikipedia. And how do children use the information they find? I often hear teachers complain about cut and pasted homework. And certainly, it's easy for children to use the information they've found on the web without seeming to, seeming to have considered it at all. It's important to think about the tasks we're setting and the questions that we're asking and try to make it difficult to respond with a cut and paste as pupils need to find two views and compare or express their ideas using a different style or format. This is just two examples of how technology actually changes the way we need to teach because information is so readily available and because it can easily be reproduced at the touch of a button. The way that things can be reproduced brings other challenges too. In the days of analogue, amateur copies were never good quality, whether it was audio, tape to tape or photocopied. The more copies that were made, the more the quality of the copies deteriorated. Now this is different for digital information, which can be copied faultlessly and repeatedly. The combination of this and a worldwide network for distributing material changes the game as far as making copies go and makes the whole thing much more possible. 
Pirate movies and films are not an internet phenomenon, but it was made much more easy to do with the internet. And it's important that teachers, as teachers we educate young children about rights issues and how digital artefacts are still very much people's property. However, the internet also gives great opportunities to share content that's free. The open movement on the internet facilitates the sharing of pictures, computer code and even educational resources through the Creative Commons licensing system. Creative Commons allows those publishing on the web to select from a number of different licenses to express whether the content can be shared, modified or used commercially. This and other licensing systems, as they become more mainstream, will allow us to be clearer about who owns which material on the internet.